Have you ever done radio? Yes, I have. I used to have a radio, uh, but I, you know, it was one of those things that um, you fund yourself. So it's like a self-funded radio show. But yeah, I've done a couple of stations. Please tell a little oh, bit. Okay. Let's tune um, into this. <laughs> all right. So, okay. This is kind of like the origin of the name Cricket. <clears throat> I won't tell you what my real name is. First of all, because I hate it. And second of all, because I have creditors looking for me. So <laughs> I was going to say, if you say it, we will bleep it out. Oh, so, okay. Well, it's fine. It, you will. Uh, yeah. You, you better. I will. Okay. It's oh, what a, okay. Yeah. Lovely name. <laughs> but it's so basic, you know? Yeah. Is your last name... Gil, Gil, is yeah. that mm -hmm. okay? Don't so worry, I, I am paying my creditors. <laughs> They're getting like five dollars a month, you know, and I feel like that's what so, it's worth. That's more than enough. Yeah, I mean, you're getting something. That's man. There are so many people that are giving nothing, and you're giving so much. You're giving so much to this community. You're giving so much to comedy cricket. I feel like I am just getting a, a good shower of abundance of goodness and oh, comedy really? here. That's, yeah, that's that Asian wisdom thing. <laughs> That's because I'm old lady. Old lady trapped in a 20 year old's credit report. I know. <laughs> and I was going to say, too, I mean, you've been, you started in comedy. How long have you been doing it for? Well, did you want me to tell you the radio story first, or did you want me to tell you comedy? You see, this is why you're a better hostess than I am, because I went and jumped around in four different things. It's probably because of the espresso that we just had. I know. And <laughs> we'll talk about this later. But yeah, let's go. Let's tune back into the radio bit. How did you okay. get into that and change it? Um, so back in, I want to say 2013. Okay. Um, maybe even 2012, like 2012, 2013-ish. Uh, I literally like went to an Italian restaurant in Scottsdale, like North Scottsdale, Mama off mia. 90th and Pima. Somewhere oh, there. Uh, Andreoli. Yes, that's the one. And <clears throat> I met this woman there. Okay. This black woman whose name I can't remember because I don't I haven't spoken to her in years, but she was a nice lady, okay. and she started telling Janice? me. Mm -mm. She started okay. telling me. Would about that be this. cool if I was able to guess? I know. Every I'd be like, "Oh yeah, thing. that's her." <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so she introduced me to this um this guy named Magic Mike. Don't think. Well, I called him Magic Mike, but it was an old white guy, so it's not the same. Oh darn! Okay, it's All not right. Channing Tatum. <laughs> I wish it was. Shit, we wouldn't be doing this podcast at your house. You'd be at my house. <laughs> Channing would just be laying there, know, looking pretty, be like in a front bare of us. skin rug. <laughs> Channing Tatum, you know, <laughs> keep the apple in your mouth, sweetie. Just you be know? dancing, but twerking behind the camera. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, I'd be like, that's his full time job, now. <laughs> twerking for me. But um. <laughs> So she introduced me to these guys that were doing this radio show, okay. um, and uh, it was called Discover Arizona. They were uh, really nice guys, nice. and um, they basically just talked about um, tourism in the state. You know, that was their. Focus. Oh, okay, okay. So I, you know, and they were they were they would welcome people onto the show. Basically, as long as you can sell ads, you could be on the show. Which you know, that's fine. You know, that's how they do it, and I'm not knocking that. Okay. But I couldn't sell any fucking ads. Uh, so how does that even go? How do you sell ads? Do you have to go to a company and say, "We, I have a radio show. If yeah. you want to be promoted, yeah. it's X amount of money." Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and I'm just not, you know, I, I have a hard time selling tickets. I have a hard time selling ads. You know, I'm not it's, a seller. It's not fun. Yeah. I'll say that too. I, I don't, I don't like it either. But they let me be on the show, and I was like, I need to come up with a name. Okay. So I was gonna, I was like, so I was like Cricket Jones, right? Because I heard someone on uh, the radio, KTAR, I think it was. I listened to that shit. I'm like my grandma listening to the news all the time. Hey, I do too. But I gotta know when the bomb drops. So <laughs> I um, KTAR you know, with the exclusive I on know. that. Yeah. And the bomb has dropped. <laughs> KTAR, yeah. breaking news. <laughs> yes. Run. You know. Um, <laughs> Oh, you better fuck that mistress you've been looking at. <laughs> yeah. Hurry and get <laughs> it in. over in six months. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, have you seen Don't Look Up? No. Oh, shit. Don't look don't, don't look at it if you don't want to be depressed. It's basically saying that we're all going to die. It was amazing. Um, wait, 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 wait. Is this a, a documentary? Is this no, no, it's real? Netflix. It's, oh, it's, Netflix. It's okay. Leonardo okay. DiCaprio. No, it's not real. Oh, it's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit man. Out of I know I've been missing oh, KTR man. for a week, but I didn't know it was this bad. Oh, God. I mean, like, God damn it. <laughs> they stormed the Capitol and hit the button. Oh, no, not again. Oh, <laughs> they hit God. the button this time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, oh, my okay. God. That's horrible. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll speed this up because it's boring. Um, no, no, it's good. It's good. This is, hey, it's a podcast. We're here for a while. People. Oh, Do you true. know what people are doing while they're listening to podcasts? Masturbating? <laughs> How did you know? It that, seems like the number one answer. The KTR said 60% of people yeah. masturbating while Survey they're listening says, to a podcast. Ding! Ding! Masturbation! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. They're like, oh, man, number two. porn just doesn't do it anymore. I just want a little comedy advice <laughs> podcast. This is great. <laughs> ah. Number two, I th- so these are what I imagine people are doing. Washing the dishes, mm-hmm. doing the laundry, mm-hmm. folding the laundry. That's probably way down the list. Putting away the laundry. laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the two things I don't do. I wash it. <laughs> you see the pile of clothes on top of my dryer. I'm oh. like, shit, I'm, I'm a fucking mess. You know what? Folding is so tedious in the first place. And then, do you see how I took your story and took it into something so much more boring, mm-hmm. like folding laundry and doing mm-hmm. laundry? Well, I think I'm going to fold up this story put it away and let's go back are you sure Cause I, I really wanted to hear what you had to say about the laundry I, you know i just you uh, know why i'm fascinated because i'm in a white house like this is a real white house <laughs> for the first time and i mean i've been i have i have caucasian friends yes you know right plenty of them and i love them to death like my friend rose i fucking love him right and i've been over his house before and you know yeah. he's very welcoming open all that but he doesn't do the shit that you got. I mean, first of all, you speak two language at the, <laughs> languages at the same time. I was like, wow, look at them going back and forth between whatever that is and English. I was like, wow. And they're including me in it. I was like, this is great. You know, so, and then you guys gave me latte. When I, so like when you go to a black house, all I get is water from my black friends and it's bottled. Here I got a, a choice, latte, espresso, espresso. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, and would you like almond milk or oat milk? I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. I walked into a Starbucks. And I did. I wrote your name wrong so you would feel like oh, you, you were in the yeah, Starbucks. thank you very it's much. Beautiful. I mean, Cricket it with a K. foam and everything. And like, this is delicious too. Like, I've never had a uh, latte this good. Like, I'll be back. Oh my God. Tomorrow thank morning you. at seven on my way to work, I'll be swinging by your house so I can get my latte to go, please. I don't know if you saw, but there is a drive through option. If you just drive through the backyard, I'll be right there. Mm-hmm. Take your order. And I will have oat milk this time. Oh, good. good. I will replenish. Thank you. I, re- I require that. And then we've got like Brazilian nuts. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, this is, I never get this treatment. And yo, check this out. Blow your fucking mind. <laughs> Ice water, dude. In a glass. In a glass. Yo, when I go to my friend's houses, I get bottled water. Like, for real. You ain't going to get no cup. And then you, ice. Forget about it. You ain't no eyes. <laughs> I, you know, I really try. That that's the garnish on top of all if of it. If you had given me a straw, I think I would have fainted. Oh my! I did forget the straw. Do you I'm have straws? So sorry. Yeah. Do you want? One? Oh my god. Yeah. Later. Okay, I'll get you one. Because I'm gonna need another latte. I'll get you. I'll get. Oh, so, oh, so, so to sum we'll up the uh, name. Yes. Okay, because I get asked that question a lot. Like, where did the name Cricket come from? Is that your real name? Mm-hmm. And one day I do plan to change my name to Cricket. Oh, okay. Um, because I really like it, but my mom is against it. But I was like, maybe I can just put it in there. But then, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I, I really like that name. I heard someone, uh, someone's fiance, I think they got married now. Uh, her name is Cricket. And I okay. thought, I, when I heard it the first time, I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool name. Right. But then I was in bed. This is where it really came from. I was in bed late one night, and my son at the time was breeding leopard geckos. <laughs> Okay, so we that's had, a like, great start we to the story. We had like 25 leopard geckos in our home at the time, and we had to keep them fed, and so we also had the equivalent of whatever they eat in crickets in another container. Oh. And those fuckers were loud. So I remember being in bed one night, and I just heard crick, 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 you know, the chirping and shit all through yeah. the house, and I was like, boom, cricket gill, there you go. And that's where it came from. It literally <laughs> came from... <laughs> A, an aquarium full of crickets that were keeping me up at night and I thought this would be a great radio name and that's what I went with was cricket and I was like I'm going to spell it like it's French you know with two T's and an E at the end so it's fancy I did and notice that yeah, that was a nice touch so that's where it came from but my mom calls me okay bleep out the first name bug yep. my mom calls me bug oh okay so, so, you know, so the bug part is true you know so I was like bug cricket there you go alright it's full circle that's really good. Yes. I, that was a little bit of a surprise twist to the story, too, because I was thinking, <clears throat> I, I don't know what I was thinking, but it was an animal that was making so much noise, you wanted it to stop, and you were like, that's me. That's me. That's yes. Me. <laughs> I'm an animal that's making out so much noise that you want me to shut the fuck up. Like, would Cricket please shut the fuck up? But you, I, I will say... Without sounding offensive, the loud part you nailed. Because you have it in such a way, though, that it's not annoying. It's good. I want to hear more of it. It's like an ice cream sundae, really. I just want scoop after scoop. 
And I feel like that's what I was fed when the first time we met. I know we talked about this downstairs, <laughs> oh, yeah. what but was that? at the Which Shoot Your Shot Shoot show. Your shot. Yeah, I love and that show. You guys have great shows. Oh, you thank you so Mark much. Come, and your skits. Oh, my God. If you ever need an old black lady in one of your skits, I am the one. I will beat up someone. I will deliver a pizza. Whatever you need me to do. You know what? I will keep that in mind. Yeah. And uh, I will pay you in lattes and water. And... <laughs> I'll take the lattes, dude. <laughs> Fill me up on the freaking lattes. And I, 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 This is how I used to drink tea when I was a kid. Wait. I used to put my pinky up. Now I guess I have arthritis. I can't do it no more. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, here. Uh, by the way, like lovely this. nails. Oh, thank you. I would do it like this. This is how I used to drink tea all the time or coffee when I was a kid oh, with my, my pinky up. I was a crazy fucking child, okay? I was an only child and the only grandchild for like eight years. And then, like, I had a half brother, but we didn't grow up together. I didn't meet him until I was 16. And, you know, by then, I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to see some boys. You know, I don't care about this kid. <laughs> you know, like, get this kid out of here, you know? But I was like running the streets at 16. I didn't care about having a little brother, but Dang. I did take him. Uh, with me a lot when I turned when I reached my twenties, we hung out a lot because mm -hmm. he was older. Okay, and I think I corrupted him. You know, How much older was he? Um, well, let's let's see. My when I met him, he was five. Okay, because uh, we're like twelve years apart. <clears throat> oh, so okay. When when I was in my twenty, you know, so he was maybe like eleven or twelve. You know, okay. when we started hanging out more, and then um, as he got older, we hung out more, and then I think eventually I gave him like his first joint you know that kind of stuff you know? oh nice yeah i'm a corrupter uh, it started with the pinky and yeah, then it started yeah. with the index yeah and <laughs> it was like because <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we have a very fond memory of him being like 17 and um, and, and smoking a joint well we smoked a joint now and then, did and you then, teach him pinky up when smoking no i didn't was teach it? him pinky okay up. all right that's like me <laughs> you, that's my like, thing i'm a lady right. so, I, I, I smoke my weed <laughs> <laughs> with a little hot sauce yeah, you know, put my pinky up um oh, but God. i um we have a fond memory of the two of us <laughs> uh sitting in like a safeway parking lot and so back in chicago safeway it was dominic's so oh, okay. and it was on okay. 71st and Jeffrey. I, I, I wonder, sometimes I wonder if I'm dying. Cause I'm like, I have these memories of my childhood and they're so vivid now. And I'm like, why are they so vivid? Like, why are they coming back? But maybe I'm getting more sleep. I don't know. I don't want to interrupt you, uh -oh. but I, I've been having that too. Just oh. yesterday. The, it's it's just I'm these experiences just that trigger these yes. memories that have been locked up in some sort of mind locker mm -hmm. that I had, would never have remembered if I tried. But just these different things that happen trigger the memories. Exactly. Like, so that's what's been happening to me. And I got to admit, I've been trying to dig into my past to help me with my comedy, to be more expressive and to not hold back. So maybe it's working. That you know. See, same thing in terms of every morning. I, I started, I bought this book called The Artist's Way. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a cre it's a spiritual guide to creativity. And one of the things that you do is you write three pages in the morning they call them morning pages mm -hmm. not very original for a creative guide but <laughs> morning pages <laughs> and guess what you write in the morning <laughs> oh really i thought we were like morning betty white like, <laughs> so... morning pages <laughs> so you do that and, and so... i'm a creative guy <laughs> yeah okay. so you write the, the pages mm -hmm. and then they have these prompts where you talk about and you try and get in touch with your child Ooh. side where you talk about what was your favorite thing to do when you were a kid what do you like to do and it brings that back and i feel like that has been more tying in with everyday life where i'll do something and i'll think oh my god when i was a kid i did that one thing and blah blah, blah. and so it, it it surges yeah it resurfaces these and i memories. really think that's what we need to tap into uh to really mm -hmm. be as creative as 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 we can get you know yeah like the key yeah. to the key to creativity for me is 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 unfortunately being a little irresponsible <laughs> because <laughs> like you know like yeah, yeah. like i try to look at everything optimistically you know like right now we're kind of like uh in a way financially um because i was let go from my job like right before christmas you know oh man but that's that's my problem not yeah not you know my audience's problem or whatever you know mm -hmm. so i i i i deal with that but i try to look at things from a positive perspective and everywhere everywhere i can yeah um and i think that helps with the comedy you know and i and i and i like being childish and immature and irresponsible <laughs> and you know like I'll, I'll have fallouts with other comedians where they'll like say something to me and i'll be like okay i'm not talking to you anymore and i just leave it at that you know <laughs> and they're like why are you doing that you know yeah, you should have yeah. a conversation with that but my friends will be like oh you should talk to so and so so and so you guys are being ridiculous i'm like no 
They yeah. said they were done. I'm done. Okay, next. You know, so yeah, I'll be like yeah. petty or whatever. But all of those yeah. are a sign of immaturity. But I think you need a little immaturity um, in your life uh, to help you with your creativity. Not too much because, you you know, you got to be able to pay the bills and, and uh, be an adult, you know, every once in a while. It will force you to be responsible no matter what, you know. <laughs> I think just being irresponsible with the pinky up is what you got to do. Yeah, I like you know, it. Have I a like little it. bit of panache to panache. what you're doing yeah and i, I oh I, I have to finish telling you that that my brother though oh yeah please, okay this is very, it's very short um i feel like we're missing the punchline it's like are those my jokes <laughs> um so basically we have a memory of me corrupting him for this first joint and we end up in the parking lot at dominic's and we buy this intimate intimate chocolate cake i don't know if you remember they had that chocolate yes. fudge cake it was yes. so good i don't know if they do it anymore because I, love... I haven't seen it but it was delicious oh, we no. didn't have yep. any forks in the, in the parking lot so we just kind of <laughs> smashed it with our hands and we just dug into this cake and we're like because i was like well we'll just, have, we'll just do a little bit you know and then it turned yeah. into the whole cake and then like our faces were all covered in chocolate here we are in the parking lot just covered in chocolate cake but it was the best bonding experience between me and my brother ever you know that is so sweet i love that dude we're, we bonded that's so nice and you know it just really it, it makes me think about the times where I've had a dish and I haven't had utensils and you're forced to go a little more primal. Yes, you know? but it feels good. It feels so good. Yeah. I almost wish we just got rid of forks and knives anyway, because aren't they cutting turtles up and things like that? Forks and knives? Oh, like plastic forks and yeah, knives? Yeah, plastic Probably. forks and knives. Cutting Even the up. metal ones, they cut harder. I don't know if people are throwing <laughs> them in the ocean. I but... think we're throwing them directly at the turtles. <laughs> yeah, people are just aiming them at the turtles at this yeah, point. Spear yeah. fishing. Spear. So, yeah. But um, I wonder what it would be like. It'd be a kind of like an uh, um, etiquette purge where you just no manners that's for the, twelve that's, hours. It's not just that's not an etiquette purge. That's the purge. That's the purge. Yeah, that is the purge. That... <laughs> and you know, I gotta say, I could, I, the older I get. I don't know if it's me becoming cantankerous or if it's the oh. world. I don't know. But I feel like I can justify the purge. Like, I'm like, mm, I've been on the 101 during rush hour. Let's do it. I'm getting, you know what? I'm getting there. Oh, thank I you. I really okay. am. I'm getting to the point. This might be, I almost feel bad saying dark. this. But I remember, I remember the movies where it seems like so many movies this would happen where people get trapped and then they're like, well, we have to save everybody. And the other guy, the bad guy is mm -hmm. like, well, if we like kill one then we'll all live for sure right and the other one's like well there's only a 50 percent chance that all of us will live if we save all of us but you know there's a 50 percent chance and i'm used to be i was like that guy's a bad guy that's trying to kill people now i'm like yeah, you should definitely kill that guy like, <laughs> my thinking my logic is um there's usually one person that dies anyway let's just make the decision now you know, right? instead of you having to sacrifice yourself later on just let this dude go you Ex know? oh my god exactly <laughs> i feel a little bit of a weight lifted yeah, there like, having said that because yeah. i feel i don't know and besides it's a movie we can do whatever we want yeah exactly just exactly. sacrifice them we'll get it over with so anyway well, like babies in the zombie apocalypse done what's They're your fucking opinion about babies I, it infuriates me why do first of all i'll be damned if you're gonna have sex during a zombie ap apocalypse better get that shit out of here and then a baby <laughs> a baby <laughs> we are not dragging this pregnant woman all over the zombie apocalypse oh. i'm not fucking doing it that that bitch can walk i'm not doing it oh she's gonna be a little cordon blue oh. for the zombies because i'm just pushing her in at that as soon point. As, as soon as she can't run no more, she's toast. I'm not exactly. carrying you, and I'm not accommodating any of this. Every time she has to oh stop and God. pee, that's like a trented, a, a scented trail for the exactly, zombies. Exactly, exactly. And then when the baby gets here and it's crying. Now, don't Done. get me wrong. I love Done. babies. Babies oh, are Oh, me too. But in a in zombie a, apocalypse? That's a different world. Different like, set of ethics, different code. Exactly. It's like having a police siren in your backpack. Exactly. Exactly. It's like that person in the movie theater that didn't turn their phone on silent. That's that fucking baby. That's going. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. They, they deserve. And here you are crouching in a corner in like a milk crate or something, if you could fit in a milk crate. But, you know, like Probably. you're in a giant milk crate. <laughs> a gigantic, yeah, a family, gigantic size. family size milk crate. And you got this baby, and they're like. Yeah, and then the zombie's like, oh, yeah, dinner bell. You know, yeah. like roll that baby right on out there. Like, here you go. At that point, she's, I, she's here by herself. I feel um, no sympathy for the the crew. It's like you you're done, oh. you're done. Who would oh, be? What kind of Brazilian nuts are these? Are they good? These are delicious. 
I've never heard a light and fluffy nut. I'm like, what kind of nut is that? Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, it's very light and fluffy. Are these from Brazil? Because they don't even taste like any American nut I've ever had. You know what they are? What? Peanuts. Those are from Brazil? Yeah. Peanuts did from your, Brazil. Did your brother-in-law bring them? Yeah, Vinicius. No wonder they don't taste like our peanuts. Because I was like, these don't taste like they have lead in them. Like, I, what's, <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with these peanuts? They taste actually healthy. Mm, yeah, I don't feel Shit, any tumors growing on I know. my body right now. This exactly. is great. These are the lightest. I do taste the peanut flavor now. Holy right? Shit. It's very subtle. It's very I've subtle. I've never had a subtle peanut. No. Usually nuts are, are bold. That's why that's why there's so many expressions I think about going nuts oh. and feeling nutty. feeling nutty. There's never a subtle Busting expression. Busting a nut, like that's Busting violent. Busting a nut. Like, you know, bust it. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then mm. all that explosion of... It's not like, oh, I had a mild nut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she brought me to a mild climax. <laughs> you know, it's never that. It's always like, pow! <laughs> Even though that's not how it fucking happens. No. Y'all know it's not how it happens. You don't bust anything. You're not busting anything. It feels like you're busting something, but you're, it's like a... <laughs> it's like turning it's the like faucet on just real quick instead of that slow drip it's just turning it on all the way and then plow it all just comes I mean, out it goes straight down it doesn't go you know. <laughs> oh man well i feel like <sighs> I'm, i feel like i'm still a virgin really yeah i feel like i've been re-virginized oh my I've god i've been single for a long time i just i don't i'm like I think I'm like, what is it, asexual? Where you just don't have like the the drive or the yeah, interest? Yeah, I just don't care. I don't care because uh, I'm I'm like, the last year I've just been really focused. Last two years, really focused on uh, well the pandemic and uh, yeah, comedy. Fair, yeah. I am. I feel like that is great, and I feel like lightweight. Pregnant. Sex is a wonderful thing. Well, you're married. You better be happy. And I love having you no, know, I I actually I love it very much. <laughs> okay, Jesus. But <laughs> <laughs> you got the sandals on and everything. Yeah. You should have wore a white robe. I'd have really been freaked out. Like, yo, I'm in Jesus' house right now and they just gave me a latte and well, ice water in a cup. I mean a glass. Well, my child. And let me lightweight peanuts. Just say, yeah, um, what a weird combination too. I feel like we should have done it a little better. No, I think this is great. The not, okay, okay. And uh, anyway, I don't know what I was saying about sex. Oh, it's great, but like I feel like sometimes if you have it too much, it can be a little bit of a distraction from what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so, you know what? This is gonna be a weird segue, but I feel like I can segue this into comedy and I wanna ask you a question. Oh, please. So how do you feel about, cause I, I, I feel kind of weird. Some, like I feel like how many shows should we be doing a month, you know? like. Huh. If you do too many shows a month, if you're on too many tickets a month, and you're a comic that, let's say, writes their material, uh, as opposed to just um, a lot of crowd work, you know, mm -hmm. some, some a lot of comics here are mm -hmm. really good at crowd work. A lot of comics here are really good at written work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a few comics have a combination of both, right? Which is great. Um, but you can oversaturate yourself in this market. Yeah. And um, how do you avoid doing that? <coughs> but also getting your name out. Damn, that's a really good question. So the original question is how, perhaps what's the perfect number of shows to mm -hmm. do a month or when is too much? I actually, I heard a really good response from a comic named Andrew Santino. Mm. And he was talking about, <clears throat> he has a podcast with Bobby Lee and it's called Bad Friends and they just, they're bad friends and they talk about it. But Bobby was saying, Andrew, you look more, confident you look more positive like you're when you walk into a room you really command the respect i don't know what he's commanding but anyway he's, you just look better yeah you look more positive and he said <clears throat> yeah because before the pandemic there was such a uh, i was grinding so hard doing stand-up so much and he's been doing stand-up for probably 10 plus years wow. and he's like i was trying to hit those shows like three shows a night just doing as much as i could uh -huh. and i the two of the shows I was hungry, I was tired, so I wasn't doing my best. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic taught me to slow down a little bit. Hmm. And so I've heard this from several different people, and including my, I've done it myself, where I thought, okay, I could try to just do as much as I can, because that's what people say. I feel that advice is out there so much, where it's like, just do everything you can. Right, get as, do get as, as much stage many time shows as you can. can. But I feel like there are so many different muscles to hit. Mm -hmm. People might be metaphorically skipping leg day. And I think there are some things that you could be doing instead of going and on a show, yeah. you could be uh, maybe 
do a drop in improv class if right. you want to get better at crowd work. Mm -hmm. um, focus on writing mm -hmm. one day, or even if you want to get together with some folks and write, uh, or not write, but um, just go talk about your writing and and what do you call that? It's like a writer's group. Mm -hmm. Wow, creativity. And then <laughs> if, if you also- Morning writing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do some morning pages in the morning. <laughs> and if you also, um, one of the things that I'm trying to do too is TikToks. Mm. So I'm trying to extend my creativity to TikTok and just try and do different video formats there. So I've done a couple where I've stitched together me. I did one with me and one of the Island Boys where it was like, oh, I dating. saw that one. Yeah, oh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> the Island Boys, they, they are such weird. They are so strange. Where are your parents? They like, are, what? right? I just, I just want to see your parents in this, you know, yeah. are they human? Are they? <laughs> Do you think there's maybe their parents are just tattoo artists? I maybe think, I think they were hatched. Tattoo artists, yeah, I could see that. But what about the hair? That oh, I don't know where the hair came from. But I this is gonna come out at the week after next. So not this Monday, but the Monday after. Trash or treasure will have happened, mm -hmm. and I am planning on dressing as an island boy. Oh, that's gonna be great! And I oh saw, I saw a tutorial on how to get my hair like what? that. What? Okay, so what do you need to put in your hair to put it like? You that? need to like braid your hair in in different spots. Uh -huh. No, not braid. Um, ponytail it, Pony and then get wire or no, uh, pipe cleaner, and then put it there. Pipe cleaner, those little. I don't know the pipe cleaner. Those oh, little, those little. Okay, those I forgot little, what they're the, called. I, I, yeah, the um, I don't know, I don't know either because I guess pipe cleaners. I, yeah, I it's usually pipes. for all those audio listeners. It's like the metal wire with the fluffy oh, the bristles. Thing, oh, you can around use them. that to clean your bongs, your pipes too. Yes, yes, yeah, bong okay. cleaner. And so th that's probably what the island boys use it for. Yeah, and so in their hair. Yeah, <laughs> so you put that in the hair, and then you just spray paint the no frost way. the tips. Yeah. So we'll see how it comes out. Yeah. Oh my God. I hope it. Oh, I hope it works. That's gonna be great. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to it. I haven't told Lamar yet, so we uh -oh. need to. Because I told him we want to dress up as Island Boys. He was like, "Yeah, I'll look for hair," and he couldn't find the hair. And I didn't tell him about hair? the tutorial. Not even on Amazon. No. Which, if they continue to be a trend, this might be a I good uh, a good product mm. to sell. Island Boys. Anyway, but That's um, but yeah, to answer your question. I think that there's so much you could be doing outside of just doing shows. Mm -hmm. Try and take some time and practice um, doing that. And then another thing, again, from this book, The Artist's Way, is beyond the morning pages, you are supposed to do an artist date where you take two hours a week and you just go out and do something that is fun for you, that you oh. enjoy doing. And what that does is that really refreshes you, it recharges you, it allows your mind to take a break mm -hmm. when you're trying to force yourself to think about things, mm -hmm. about about funny things to write, or oh, I gotta do this on stage. It just relaxes you and then it allows that stuff to come a little bit um, I believe that that's better. true. That's so. true. Because I, I, uh, during the summer, I would uh, drive up to up north every every weekend or every other weekend i yeah. drive up there that's why my oil uh engine like needs oil a change out of, yeah i had to get an oil leak change oh no yeah it's, it's good now oh, good. <laughs> but uh yeah but you know so much driving but i yeah. would drive up north um where'd you drive a flagstaff flagstaff sometimes well so i would take like the back road like 87 okay and go yeah. up through uh what is that payson mm -hmm. and uh strawberry and pine and then take that up and then nice. cu cut over there's somewhere up there there's some marshes up there that you can drive by and then they have two out outlook points or whatever and you oh, can look cool. at those so that's cool and then i like driving through the forest and then i'll get nice. out and smoke a joint in the forest that's oh, pretty awesome beautiful yeah just to be out in nature like i just love it i love going up there it's so beautiful and then um, I always make sure I have to drive down from Flagstaff to Sedona on that um, scenic highway. Oh, so yeah, Oak Creek Canyon. And, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And then uh, sometimes I'll stop in, in Sedona or downtown and get something, I don't know, whatever, chocolate fudge or something. Oh, um, I the, think I know exactly place. where you're talking about. Yes, we love that place. I think there's a couple place. places down there. We go, oh, yeah, okay. the one that we go to, I forgot what the name of it was, but it's you, you it's come like out Sedona from. Fudge Company or yeah, something. that was it. That was Is it. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. I love that place. Oh, <laughs> so good. They had it, you know. Just so good. They were suffering from a supply chain shortage, too. 
Really? Yeah, they they were like, we don't have like all the stuff we usually have because you know the supplies or whatever. I was like, what the hell is going on? Like the supply chain shortage hits random spots. Damn, I wonder what they're because the supply chain shortage is that stuff that's coming in originally from China and then coming in. Probably. I think I said China like Donald Trump says China. Uh oh, you want to say it again? Coming in from China. From China. It's, you got to use terrific. all your lips. You got to <laughs> use all your lips. It's so good. The uh, Sedona <laughs> Fudge Company is terrific. I know the guy that works there. He's great. Know the owner. <laughs> terrific. Is, he's from Sedona. <laughs> he's, from, he's from Sedona. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I just blacked out. Oh, shit. Too white. Too white. Oh, <laughs> you gotta keep the Jesus thing going. Uh, yeah, yeah. Woo, woo. Okay. Um, but <laughs> the, the fudge, back to the fudge. No, mm-hmm. it, the fudge is delicious. My parents, and I grew up in Cottonwood, Arizona. Oh, I, okay. I'm, I know that place. So uh, next time you're in town, stop by. My parents will give you a latte. And okay, some water. okay. Oh, they have lattes too. They, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Latte. They have. That's where I got the whole latte thing. <laughs> <laughs> My middle name is Espresso, actually. <laughs> but they have they had an industrial uh, an industrial espresso machine Holy that shit. was I think they bought it for pretty cheap. My uncle, he lives in Flagstaff and he knows a guy named Tim Macy of the Macy's coffee shop and he was giving away because it wasn't working as well as it used to. So Wow, like so they've got the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So God, I have never felt more anxiety than when I go to my. And there's parents no blood house. in their coffee, right? <laughs> no blood. Well, sometimes I ask for it, just a drop. Just a little drop of blood. <laughs> for <laughs> for all of you people that are saying this is really getting weird now, to give a little bit of context, there are the little dishes that you put in the espresso machine, and you put it in that. Uh, there's the handle, and then there's the dish where you put the coffee grinds in, and you can switch it out for a single or a double. Uh, so so the depth increases for a double but i couldn't quite peel it out and i went so i was so dedicated because i wanted cricket to have the best espresso with the finest grounds and the perfect drip and i just are you taking notes it was i don't usually compare myself to jesus but i bled for cricket yes he bled in my (laughs) car and i wanted her to know it so i was like get that iron in your cup and I told him I can only do O negative blood. <laughs> I don't so, even know what my blood type is. You don't know what your blood type I is? I know, and that's a shame. I feel like, because um, I'm O negative, and I feel okay. like now that I That's I've special, just, right? Yeah, I feel like I just made myself a mark. <laughs> because everyone knows now that I'm O negative, and like, oh shit, we got to get that cricket. There is so She's much I need negative. to bleep in this podcast now. Your name, <laughs> I need to bleep out the blood type. <laughs> There's a lot side. of sensitive you guys, information. guys, I don't want anyone coming after me. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I um, I used to think that, like, one day, okay, this is, like, a com- complete conspiracy theory, but what no, if please. the – because I read somewhere about COVID that they were trying to say that people with O-negative blood have yeah. a lower chance of catching COVID. Okay. So I was like, oh, shit, O-negative, that's me. But then I was like, what if they wanted to use our blood to cure COVID? Then they would, like, farm us. Oh, you know, round us up, farm us like they do in those movies. That might they be. They could totally do that. That could be true. Mm-hmm. The, I think it would just, it would depend on where the farm would be. If where it was, do you think they would put an O negative blood farm? Probably somewhere in Arizona. You think probably so? Probably or Nevada. I, I think it would be near D- the missile D.C. test. I think they already have it there. Oh, in Underneath D.C. the Pentagon. That's where it would be. Do you think you'd be treated well? No, like, absolutely. I think we would be treated like they treated the, the immigrants. Oh, true, yeah. They'd be in cages. You wouldn't be like grass-fed, cage-free. You'd grass-fed, be, It would be free. like the sad cows. That's the new immigration policy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe Biden, and we have a new immigration policy in the U.S. Grass-fed and cage-free. <laughs> Grass-fed and Organic cage-free. immigrants from now on. <laughs> We're only taking organic immigrants. You gotta be grass-fed, cage-free. <laughs> oh, my God. No oh. GMO immigrants. Yeah, no GMO, no, no preservatives. We want pure immigrants. <laughs> no. Oh God! None of that. No <laughs> Grass fed. We don't want any <laughs> cocaine balloons in our. No, immigrants. we do want the cocaine balloons. Please don't, <laughs> don't, don't not bring the cocaine balloons. <laughs> Those are we essential. Okay. Oh, can I make a? Co- oh, I don't want to make a confession. Please. <laughs> I'll bleep it out. I'll edit oh, it out yeah. if it's Damn, too bad. I'm gonna have a lot of bleeps. <laughs> I tried three different drugs last year because I was so oh, okay, well, but for a number of reasons because okay, um, I wanted to just experience it once in my lifetime because I've always been curious about these particular drugs. Some of them are like psychedelics that's supposed to help sure. you with different 
you know, depression, anxiety, things like that. Yeah. Like mushrooms have that, um, and LSD are both known to to do that. So I wanted to try both of those. Did you microdose? Or did you just? I did it wrong, is what I did. <laughs> I think I made, but I almost killed myself. I don't know. Oh like when I tried the mushrooms, yeah, I did not know that you were supposed to just eat a little bit of them, and I like oh, ate no. them. I just like took it. And was like, okay, boy, this is gross, and I just ate it. And then I was so, <laughs> oh I was so nauseated. Just like those oh Entenmann's. Oh my just, gosh, it was, I know, I didn't, I was No like, fork, no knife. No, just... I was like, what am I doing? You know, I don't have, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm never doing that shit again. I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And I, um, I'm um, i just a bad drug user. And so I, I tried to do that and, uh, and, and, well, and I didn't drink enough water and my like, back was hurting. I was like, oh, fucked up. And how so, long did it last? Just a day. Just a day. Yeah, just a day. I gave just, birth. I could handle it. Oh my god. Okay. So this is what I've heard mm. for when you your first time taking mushrooms. You need to take a small amount. You need to have somebody with you, mm. and okay. you need to be in an environment where you feel comfortable. Well, I'll, then I'll never do it. <laughs> that's, too, that's too many check marks in one. Se- I can't. I can do one of those things, but I don't know about the environment where I feel safe or having someone with me. You know, or you know, small amounts. You know what you could do is take a drive up north, mm-hmm. go through Strawberry, mm-hmm. find a nice little meadow, mm. take a little morsel of a mushroom, uh-huh. pop it in the mouth. Uh-huh. And then relax. Just that, roll that around. Does, that does sound like something. And there's a lavender farm up there in uh, Pine. Yeah, there is. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I love that lavender farm. Roll around in some lavender. I wonder if she'd let me. I can ask her. Don't ask. Just do. Just do it. This, just walk it's up better to ask for forgiveness Just wait till permission. they go to sleep at night. Then just I'll go out in the... Mid- I'm always out at night anyway. I'm more like a night owl. This I is, like This it. is weird for me to be here. Midnight lavender. We should have done this at midnight. Oh, you know what? If we had done this at midnight, it would have been a whole different podcast. I would I would probably have offered spirits instead Ooh, of lattes. I thought that maple syrup bottle was whiskey. Oh man, I'm sorry to disappoint. Yeah, that's the one minus two points. Oh man, damn it. Okay, well <laughs> I wanted to get a perfect score. No, no, he's got a perfect score. But oh well. Um, but yeah, what was I talking about? I, oh, being farmed. Oh yeah, I think they would farm us. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> You're probably right, mm-hmm. and I think it's good that I bleep it out so that. They can't the government. Find me. I do have a lot of government officials. Do you they, have a lot? Do you believe in government? Consp- what do you think about these UFO sightings? Okay, I believe UFOs are real. I think I, I, do I feel like aliens are real. Yeah, I think I saw one. No way. Yeah, it was like New Year's Eve, like twenty fourteen or fifteen or something. Okay. And um, my kids and I were going to someone's house for New Year's, and I was driving. I forgot where it was. Like. 40th street or something somewhere in Awatuki near okay. South Mountain and as we were driving towards the mountain I saw this ship or something above the mountain and it was five green orbs in the shape of a V and it Whoa. was on it was like uh, it was like over the mountain and I was like what the fuck is that I was I mean I asked my boys I was like do you see that I know you see those five orbs and yeah. it was that V shape yeah. and I've never seen anything else like that since then and I'm telling you, and then it just disappeared. And I was like, dude, I think we just saw a UFO Damn. on New Year's Eve. Here's the it thing. It didn't bring me any luck. It's not like seeing a leprechaun. I think aliens, yeah, I don't feel like I they feel like we luck. should have like some luck with that. I feel like, yeah, we should have some good luck alien. What do you feel like aliens are going to be like when they make contact with us? Disappointed. That's what I think, yeah, too. I think they're going to be like, you guys are trash. I'm afraid that they're going to farm us. I That's what so. I'm afraid because they're probably like monsters. That's what I'm thinking too. You know, I'm thinking and, they're way smarter, mm-hmm. way more. Well, first advanced. of all, if they come here, they're smarter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whoever have, comes to gone. the other, yeah, the only thing we've managed to do is send Jeff Bezos. Right out there. You know? What do you think of Jeff Bezos? First of all, have you seen his body? He looks weird now. I haven't seen the body. His, his except for the outline when he's. Yeah, like, he's like really muscular, but he's like buff. Like, really, Jack, like, first of all, what the fuck is he doing? Like, how much? So you're not running Amazon. You're working out is what you're showing us. He's probably so rich. He's not even doing the uh, a plebeian workout like us. He's probably hired people 
to just he just lays down oh. and people flex his muscles yes. and just stimulate yeah. them. So he's jacked. Yeah, because he's like a, abnormally jacked though. He like his body is bigger than his head. You know, like and I guess that's weird for me when you get to the point where your body's bigger than your head. I get major turtle vibes from him. Yes, major major turtle vibes. ninja turtle vibes, ninja. not just regular turtles. Jeff Bezos has turned into Michelangelo. Yes, that's what. <laughs> yeah, he's throwing out Calabunga dudes. Calabunga! <laughs> I remember that show. <laughs> Calabunga, that show used to be the bomb. It was so good. It was one of my favorites. Did you have a favorite turtle? No, I, my son's my oldest son was the Ninja Turtle buff, and I but I sense. I've I've been watching cartoons all my entire life because I watched it with them. Right, right. Watched my own cartoons. Right. And I don't know if that's a good thing though. I've been I'll bleep them. that out. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no I'm not, kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, you don't have to bleep that out. But I just, you know, I I, I probably watch it. And I still watch cartoons, and they're grown, and I'm still watching cartoons. But yeah, he looks when like I, a turtle. When I'm in hotel in hotels, mm -hmm. and I'm flipping through channels, I'll usually stop at a cartoon if it's like Family what's Guy your, or. If oh, it's, I was gonna say, what's your cartoon? My cartoon. Oh my gosh. Two, I'll, I, I'll give I you really two like... categories. I'll give you two categories. Adult cartoons and your favorite old school cartoon. Oh, shit. Old school is going to be hard. Adult cartoon, I'll go with South Park, even though I haven't watched it in years. South Park. But I choice. thought that it was so good. I like the era where they're just completely silly, but they also have this point that makes you think, oh, my God, this might be true. And so I like that. For favorite kid cartoon, oh, God. I'm just going to go with Doug because I, like Doug. I feel like he's the only guy that's whiter than I am. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He, he is whiter than you. <laughs> and he's got. He's pretty nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he had all these diverse friends. I'm pretty sure Skeeter, the blue dude, was black. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They yeah, just yeah. didn't want to make him black. They made him blue instead. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, well, we're going to meet you halfway. Make him blue. <laughs> blue. <laughs> I get blue. Do you, I feel like Roger Klotz was, you know, the green guy. Oh, I think he's Hispanic. Oh, I thought he was Jewish. You thought he was Jewish? I thought he was Jewish. No, I thought he was Hispanic because he had an attitude. Did you he see the always, notes that they oh, gave him? Oh, the nose. That's oh, true. Oh god. Maybe he's a Hispanic Jew. Jewish maybe person. that could have been a blend. That's yeah. Anyway, maybe I'm. I shouldn't like that. It seems a little What's more right? racist. No, it's I... not racist at all. No. No. Okay. I'm making it racist. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not racist at all. We're just making it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm just making because you know I'm just. But what about Everything, you? Everything's racist. I want to um, flip the question. Okay, now to I actually, you. I'm actually going to have three. Oh, which I apologize well, for. That's but, not allowed. But, but but I feel like I'm old enough where I have two phases. Okay. So, okay. Or three phases. Okay. So I got more phases than you. <laughs> but, but fair enough. You like my them. favorite cartoon of today. I like quite a few of them, but um, and okay. I won't go into like anime and stuff. But I'm going to just stick with the funny ones. So like American Dad. Mm. Um, I really like them because the writing is so original and it's hilarious. Yes. Um. And then like old, but I also still watch King of the Hill, which is no a fucking brilliant way. cartoon. I liked, I watched King of the Hill when I was a kid, and I didn't like it. I think because I didn't fully understand it. Mm -hmm. There was so much subtlety in there. Yes. Then I started watching it again as an adult, and I thought, wow, this is pretty smart. That's this is pretty yeah, funny. that show is great. And Hank was such such a misogynist. It was just like, wow, you know, like Peggy, come on. I think Dude. you need to leave him. Like, right? what is going on? What am I and poor little Bobby. Bobby couldn't get away with shit. Bobby had dreams. They were like, nope, you ain't going to be no comedian. They didn't want him to be a comedian. God he wants damn to be it, a comedian. Bobby. I, I feel, used to I feel like Bobby. Oh, man. I feel like Peggy sometimes. You feel just, like Peggy? My wife just Ooh. controls me so well, much. No, I'm kidding. My wife is great. I love my wife. I like your wife. Um, but I used to, I remember one of the episodes just stuck out to me f for years where it was the episode where it was talking about dads, older guys that don't have butts anymore. Oh, and so they put in the so, silicon yes, padding. And then he was on that tractor thing and his butt burst. I, well, I know this because <laughs> yes. I would go to sleep to King of the Hill every night. So <laughs> I nice. remember. Nice. And his butt burst and they had to give him the, the silicone packs or whatever to finish the race. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. And I was just thinking, boy, that's painful. <laughs> you know, to have no ass. So oh I don't my know God. what that's like to have no ass. I uh, also don't know what it's well, like. Well, let to me be tell short. you, it is. Not fun. Yeah, I would imagine just, it hurts, right? It's horrible. I mean, just sitting down in a chair, you almost just slide off. Really? Oh, so yeah. the butt acts like a grip. Yes. Oh, not just a cushion, but a grip. And a, Well, and a nice cushion, too, because yeah. when I sit, immediately I feel 
um, disc nine and Ooh. eight just start to collapse Holy and shit. crumble. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you need like a you need a you need a travel butt. Yeah, the doctor, my doctor's like, <clears throat> well, you're doing great, but you just you really need an ass. So, <laughs> so really if get you it. can get, I can prescribe you something. I think they have them on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want a man ass or oh, woman man. ass? What do you want? Oh, I'll take anything at this point. Cat ass. I mean, God. Um. Anyway. Oh, and so, but my other though, my old school cartoon. I would oh, be yeah. uh, well. I do like the Flintstones, but not so much anymore. But um, okay, I used to watch them a lot. But uh, a I used one. to come home from school, straight home from school, to watch the Flintstones, which was weird because I was. But I was a senior in high school, so that was weird. Oh, but um, <laughs> hey, Thunder the <laughs> Thunder the Barbarian. I've never seen it. Oh my god! You you just just like look it up on v- Vimeo. Okay, because I don't think this it's even on YouTube. Or you guys, you guys have a nice house. I think you could buy it. You could probably afford to buy it. <laughs> so just go on Amazon Prime and buy it. And it's hilarious. It is so, it's like so, so corny. Yeah. But so it's about this um, barbarian, but he's like in the, they were in the future. So it's like the year, I don't know, maybe it's 2022 because it's coming up. Oh, dang. But uh, the world has been destroyed and like everyone's back to being barbarians and there's magicians and wizards and and all kinds of craziness. And this guy has, it's him and this thing called Ookla or whatever, like some kind of chewbacca Vegetable? Yeah. Oh. No, not a vegetable. (laughs) That sounds like something my mom tried to make me eat when I was five. And then the sorceress, I want to say Ariel, who is trash, she can't. She can't save them. She's supposed to be a sorceress, but she can't do shit. Like, Thundar's always trying to save her. He always has to save her. I'm like, bitch, oh. you're a sorceress. Use your fucking magic. Like, what are you standing here screaming for? Like, she's horrible. Oh, that's horrible. She's such a waste. And then, What's know, her name? Ariel. Ariel. Like, um, the Little Mermaid chick. Right, yes. Ariel. What? Ariel. Oh, that's how Sebastian, you remember? See, I told you they were speaking, like, different languages. <laughs> Ariel. Ariel. But dun, how many dun, dun. languages do you speak? Uh, it, Italian, Portuguese, and that's it. And, well, and English. English and English. Wow. Little bit, little bit of Spanish, but. Do you remember when they used to talk about ebonics? I don't think they really say that anymore. I remember, yeah. And yeah. it was like ebonics, and I, I, I know that was a big thing, and they were trying to say that that was like the black language was ebonics. I took a linguistics class, and the professor did a dissection of ebonics and was talking about how the conjugation of verbs that like he was saying it makes it, the reason that it's a dialect is because there are patterns here it's an actual it, it's got the bones mm-hmm. it's got it takes out all the, the excess m- words yeah yeah but it's funny because now everyone speaks that way it's called twitter yeah exactly One- you have to learn how to speak in 140 characters and that's ebonics you know what? Cut all the excess shit out. It's like the Amazon Prime of language just gets there yeah, super see? quick. So that means that um, uh, yet that's another another trend that that black people started was uh, speaking in 140 characters or less. That is <laughs> damn smart because sometimes there are people that are sp- uh, speaking. <laughs> I'm just like, can you just tweet the rest of it? Just tweet it. Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? He's trying to tell me right just, now. I need to tweet the rest. Just tweet it. No, just no. Just tweet it. Just tweet it, please, for the love of God. No, no. This has been great. We're gonna wind down cricket with oh, some. You didn't ask me the question though. That you asked other people. Like, how would you get started in comedy? Or is oh, that, is I, that coming up? I no, I did, but you flew by it. Fuck. No, <laughs> so it's it's gone now. No, how did you get started in comedy? Talk to me. Uh, Talk uh, to me I about it. I only say that because I want to make sure I give a shout out to Dana Wilson. Oh, good for you and good for Dana. I've been meaning to have her on this podcast and um, we just haven't been able to make it work. I love Dana. But so, enough about me. Yeah. So like, um, I'll make this quick. So Please, I was. Tweet it. 140 characters. <laughs> tweet it. No, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ebonics. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so I went to this um, comedy show at this. Uh, it was a, a cannabis. Com- well, it wasn't even a comedy show. It was a cannabis roast. Oh. There's this guy in the cannabis community. His name is Mr. Purple. And Mr. Purple is just like you would expect. Everything's purple. Oh. I think even. Well, he's an old man, so I. Oh, know. so like down yeah, here. Yeah, I think everything. It's I think the carpet is matched the drapes and it's purple. I, I don't know personally, but I'm just saying everything is purple. It's probably so, purple. Yeah. And I think that would be cool for him and his little girlfriend, you know. Oh, to 
Yeah. For the purple. To make purple. Isn't that what we make when we make love? Purple? Because guy is red, girl is blue. You do, you do make purple. And then you make purple. Uh, okay. Um. So... <laughs> It was a roast for Purple for his birthday. So everyone got up and did their thing. And then they opened the floor to people to come up and like roast. And so I was getting kind of mad listening to other people roasting him because they were all talking about his truck. He has this purple truck. Okay. It's like a metallic purple truck. Okay. And he's always inviting us out or he's always, he was always asking me to come look at the truck. And, you know, I would humor him and go look at the truck. But I'm like, I already seen this truck. That was a different truck, you know? It's the same fucking truck. Oh, so he just... <laughs> and then I, he's during the roast, I come to find out that he's been taking all these women to his truck. And I was like, God damn it. So I got up there and I'm like, <laughs> I'm jealous because I thought I was the only woman you were taking to the truck. Purple, you're taking all these women to the truck. I'm like, how are you going to take them all to the truck? I'm like, God damn it. You know, I thought I was special. So, you know, I started roasting him about that. And I was like, now nah, you've just been trolling us and whatever, whatever. And yeah. so when I got off the stage, um, a few people had asked me, uh, are you a comedian? You know, where do you perform? And I was like, I don't, I'm not. And so Dana was one of the people that asked me and she was like, oh, well you should. Oh, and nice. So I thought, well, I've heard that a couple of times in my lifetime. Like I heard it from, uh, Brandon T. Johnson, Brandon T. Jackson, Brandon T. Jackson. <laughs> like he's like, he's famous oh, and I don't know his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, the actor from Tropic Thunder, he told me that. Uh, no way. Yeah, Wait, which actor? Which Brandon one? T. The one that Brandon was like, um, he had, he was like the rapper. And, oh, you know, when, when, uh, when, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was like, uh, my people or whatever, or you people. And then, uh, he was oh, like, yeah, what he's do like, you what mean? mean? You people. Oh, the guy that, that, yeah, he had that energy, energy drink, uh, yeah. nut sauce or, uh, um, yes, yeah. Sweat, nut sweat. Some of the, ball anyway, sweat, ball, I think but, it was yeah, ball, ball sweat. sweat. Yeah, that was oh it. Oh my yeah. God. So Brandon wow. T. Jackson. So I, I, so like, okay, this is a side note. So like no. the radio show that I had was called the chatterbox with cricket and it turned into okay. the chatterbox with cricket as a web TV, sh- as a web show on YouTube. Nice. And okay. so Brandon T. Jackson was one of the people that I interviewed in the show. And we so were ha- cool. having such camaraderie and, yeah. um, and joking around. And he was like, he said, you should be up here with me. And I was like, why? He was like, for real, you should be doing stand up. So I, you know, I kept that in the Damn. back of my mind. But then when Dana said it, you know, I was like, okay, but Dana said it, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to do it. I'm, uh, and so I nice. went and made a uh, comment on Facebook and I was like, yeah, I just did this roast and it felt really good to be up there on the mic. And people were asking me if I'd ever done stand up. I think I might yeah. try it. And then Paul Arnold, who is a, he was a comedian. I don't think he's doing comedy anymore, but he's still here. Um, but he Paul, makes a drink too. That's like half lemonade, half. Mm, no, that's Arnold Palmer. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's a different Arnold. That was a wrong mix up. <laughs> and wrong. not Arnold from uh, what you talk about. Not that dude either. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so he, uh, Paul Arnold, and he uh, was doing comedy shows at the time. He was producing them. Oh, okay. And he okay. saw that post and he, w- and I had interviewed him. See, this is how shit, everything happens for a reason. It's Damn. all cyclical. And when I had my web show, yeah. I was interviewing comedians. So mm-hmm. I in- interviewed Anthony Decimito. I interviewed. Oh, um, nice. Love him. Um, oh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Triggerfish. I interviewed him. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And I interviewed Paul Arnold. Nice. And um, so Paul Arnold returned a favor and gave me a spot on his comedy show out in uh, Apache Junction. There were like maybe three people there or five people there. And like oh, most of them were the bartenders, you know, so there was like nobody there. Yeah. Any other comedians. Um, but Big Baby, was that Big Baby that was there? I think that was him. Um, but it was there that I wrote some jokes and I got up there and I did them. And, uh, and it felt really good up there on the mic. And nice. I just it just kept kind of happening from there. I started doing some open mics. Um, Bobby Johnson was uh, very, uh, very uh, I don't know, supportive uh-huh. uh, during that time because he was – he has his shows and you can go and do his open mics and then he would yeah. book you on his other shows, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that was helpful in getting me out and getting me started. And then, uh, then the pandemic, then I did the new faces, uh, attempting improv. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How did that go? Well, that, the first time I went up, uh, it went pretty, it went very well. Um, the second time I went up was just back in November and I, I got the biggest applause I'd ever gotten. Damn, uh, nice. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And uh, I think half, I think the first half of, of it sucked. And I was like, wow, so I must have saved it with the second half. <laughs> Look at you. Wow. <laughs> so, so that was really good. But um, 
yeah and i just kind of started going from there but like uh people like bobby um johnson and uh and tara shakespeare and other people yeah uh that uh, and lamar and you nice. uh that give people like me thank you i was waiting for that yeah <laughs> give people like me opportunities i know like oh. come on <laughs> holy shit you know, no. and mike and mike you know mike dapper and, and yeah uh, i haven't worked with sydney smith um but uh i've worked with quite a few others nice. and um, well, it'll happen soon yeah. sydney i know you're watching this get your fucking act together <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, especially, but really, really Bobby, though, because okay. I want to say Bobby. I don't know him. You don't know Bobby Johnson? No, no. I want to say Bobby is 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 very instrumental uh, in the city when it comes to uh, uh, giving up and coming comedians a platform to. Oh, to that's perform, great. You know, that's great. Yeah. With his with his open mics and, and all that, you know. And I think because he was he was doing like the most open mics out of anybody for a while. Oh, OK. So, yeah. Okay. So I think open mics are very good opportunities for us. But, yeah, that's how I started. It was Dana Wilson who kind of nice. gave me the encouragement. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. And then Paul Arnold, who gave me my first show. And I've just been doing it since then. We had the pandemic. And uh, then I took classes. Mm -hmm. I was taking comedy classes with Tony Visage. Do you know who Tony is? Oh, I took classes with Tony, oh, too. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. so we are. Okay, well. Fucking hate that guy. All right. No, I'm kidding. He's great. He's great. <laughs> no, he's... <laughs> he, it, was, it was fantastic. Hey, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he was a great guy, yeah. and he really... Uh, he's very different, but mm -hmm. um, he was great at helping me give us a little bit of a structure mm -hmm. without giving too much and ha too much handholding. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, it's a five week course. You've got five weeks to come up with five weeks of material. Mm -hmm. And then each week I'd go up, I'd bomb and he'd be like, do this, do that, do this. Right. And it, he'd give me these pointers where it made it into something where people were laughing at the end of in the showcase, which was amazing. You're like, holy shit. I started off with trash the, yeah. the first week. And now here we are, week five, and I've got, you know, something yeah. that I can work with. Yeah. And a lot of people, they, they scowl on classes. But I feel really? like classes are – yeah, some people are like, oh, you took classes? And they – Well, what's, I don't understand. What's wrong with that, though? They I don't – they don't exactly express it to me. But from what they express, I feel like they think that – you don't teach comedy. You learn it through experience. And I think that that's true, but yeah, I also think that um, it's helpful. Like, yeah, you learn Italian by going to Italy, but you can also learn a shitload from taking a class. Mm -hmm. And I feel like classes, it, they might not work for everybody, but they work for a lot of people. Yeah. They work for me. And at least it, it, it answers questions that you may have. And you have yeah. a source to ask questions. Yeah. Of. Yeah. You know, and that's priceless. Um, yeah. I haven't taken any classes at Improv Mania as of yet, but um, it's like a rivalry between those two guys. And I'm just Oh, like, really? Oh, I didn't even know about yeah, that. Yeah, it seems like it anyway. I could oh, be wrong, man. but I'm oh, just like, you know, we, right. we, we kind of bounce back and forth between the two of them. And I'm like, mm. Yeah. They're Usually everyone right. in comedy is so nice to each other. And nah, it's very I don't surprising. think so. I no, think I'm there's kidding. underground beef I'm, everywhere. I'm kidding. I no, think really? Okay, that's what I thought. You know? yeah, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Backstabbing. <laughs> not, no, not really. I mean, I don't know. But uh, I'll, I'll say this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any friends. I mean, I do, but I don't. I'll say uh, this. Well, uh, one, I feel like that was a cool story that, that you were talking about how you got into comedy. Mm -hmm. And I loved how you sprinkled in and gave some praise to the people that helped you. And it really, it just goes to show how much we affect each other's lives mm -hmm. by the things that we say and the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so cool that you had the natural talent and the natural gift of being funny. And you Years listen to child abuse. And, it's <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Years so glad trauma. And I'm, I'm so glad that your parents did not love you. No, I wrote um, a book. Uh, you wrote a book about it. Anyway. Okay. Well, holy shit. Um, we don't have I feel like time. we could talk for hours. We don't have enough time. I feel let's, like we would talk for so long. <laughs> Um, just Google my name; it'll pop up. Yeah, I think uh, there was a point that I was gonna make. Oh yeah, Crazy. well, it was very cool. Like, that's very cool. I love the people that give shout outs to people that have helped them along their way, and I have to give Lamar a shout out too to that point because w the first time we met on Shoot Your Shot, mm -hmm. that was the show with him and Jasmine, and he was on my podcast, and he thought, "Oh man, I can't make it to this. Who would be a good sub host?" And he thought about me. 
And as I've been working with him, I feel like he has such a good energy of, he gives everybody a chance. He doesn't really have beef with anybody, or at least he doesn't let me know. And he is trying to help people grow. Mm -hmm. And so we try and book people that might be relatively new or people that just need some more exposure. Um, and I really like the energy that he gives. And I feel like I want to be more like Lamar. And Lamar doesn't do beef. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he will get that crazy look in his eye. If you if you if you put the right combination, right things in the atmosphere, he'll yeah. get the crazy look in his eye. Yeah, for sure. So, so we're like we're a really good balance because he I I am a vindictive motherfucker. So Are you? I, oh my I god! Hate once That's I hate you, I hate you. No, I'm kidding. I'm I'm a jolly fellow. So I, I know just... I'm the kind that will be outside in your bushes if you fuck with me. Right? <laughs> oh my god! I'm, I feel like I have that in me. That's why I, I try to be like um as um non confront confrontational, confrontational as possible. Cause I feel like I would go there. I don't, I don't, I don't fight. I feel like I would just stab you right in the, right in the, you know, in the throat. Throat. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Cause I watch too much horror, K Korean horror. Good. To, oh shit. That's the worst type. It's the best type. You know. That's like the O negative you of know it's the best. horror. It's, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, oh my God. God. It's, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Real quick. I'm watching the silent sea on Netflix uh -huh. and it's basically there on the moon. And they're trying to get a new source of water because we've run out of water on the earth. And it's, and it's all contaminated. So they're trying to get new water. Okay, so, so like five years from now. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe June. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they, they, they found this water, but the water has a vi it causes a virus in the human body that actually multiplies and does all these other things inside your body. But the method of death, thank God for South Korea. They're so creative when it comes to death. <laughs> But they, you, you'd like vomit all your water out of your body. It just comes shooting out. It's like coming out of your ears and it's just shooting out your mouth. And that's the mode of death. It's all the water drains out of your body, but it looks like you're drowned. Do you see that to me? Sounds like if somebody was to say, I busted a nut. That's what that would, would I would imagine yeah, that, happening. That's what I thought. Too. Just vomiting all that's, the fluids. That's, that's the type of nuts you want. Excreting the fluids from their mm -hmm. body in a violent manner. Like... Wong Hu just like busted how, a nut. Like, how many kids do you think are in that mode? <laughs> in, that, <laughs> in that mound there? How many kids are in there? <laughs> how many kids did you just set out your mouth? Or that could be like Superhead after a long night of rappers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she went well, to the Wu-Tang concert, had backstage passes, and that's what happened the next day. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Superhead. That's the kind of fluid. That's your name, not mine. <laughs> yeah. Well... I feel like many nuts have been busted. This has been a great podcast. I want to take some of these nuts home. Wonderful. To, oh, please. I'll get a I little. I like they're my nuts because I put my fingers in them. I'll get a little pouch for you. Yeah. For them. yeah. But while I want to fill our listeners' pouch with plugs of yours. What have you got going on? Where mm. can people follow you? What's up? This will air in like two weeks. Okay. Well, first of all, you can follow me on Instagram. Facebook and I would say Twitter, but I'm never on Twitter, so fuck Twitter. But okay, Facebook yeah. and Instagram at aliens don't like hot sauce. I feel like that begs for why that handle. I, is I don't great. really know. Oh, really? I just okay. thought it was just was. I thought this is a great name. Um, it is a great name. I feel like an alien. I'm all about alien culture, like my little alien necklace. Oh, got this from Roswell. Um, nice. So I'm all about aliens and UFOs, and I just thought, well, they probably don't like hot sauce, so that's what I came up with. I like that. Nothing creative there. That's really aliens look like the ins. If you look at a typical alien picture, it mm -hmm. looks like what a white person would look like on the inside. Aliens look like Karens. They do. Mm -hmm. They look like they would arrive on this planet and be like, "Can I speak to somebody's manager? You know, the manager uh of Earth. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I want to speak to Trump." <laughs> <laughs> Like I told myself for 2022, I was going to stop being a Karen. I feel like I will admit it that I have Karen tendencies, except I'm a keyboard Karen. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I looked at my Yelp reviews and I was like, fuck, I'm like a fucking Karen in these Yelp reviews. <laughs> so I changed my name like any red blooded American. You know, I just went and changed my name on Yelp. Like they'll never know it was me. <laughs> you know, like so that's good. the American way. So um, but yeah, aliens don't like hot sauce is nice. uh, my trigger. And I'm also on TikTok, but I'm never really on TikTok, so don't go there. Instagram is my thing, man. Do TikTok. Mm -hmm. do, do TikTok? I'm telling you, okay. do TikTok. But I'll tell you offline. Anything else? Do you have any shows yeah, coming up after? Shows. So what's, uh, when is this going to This is going to come out 
the week after next and by next week i mean tomorrow so, so in eight days nine days oh, okay so like on the 20th yeah i'll be doing new faces of comedy at oh. 10 p.m prov again nice yeah i like that venue it's a great venue um and then i have a virtual chocolate sundays showcase on 2222 so february 2nd 2022 and the tickets are available now um you can go to the virtual chocolate sundays website and get tickets please and the, you can you can pay whatever you want like a dollar two dollars ten dollars oh nice yeah you know nice. it's just a donation mm -hmm. uh, type of show and um they, then you get voted on to go to the next round which would be to appear on the stage that's awesome but it's my understanding that the wait list is about three years long so oh well hey i'm trying to make sure now. i'm still around by then <laughs> you know like that's all i'm focusing on that's what you got to focus on is staying healthy and alive so you can make it to your chocolate sunday showcase you know that's what i that wrote in my morning pages today. right <laughs> as you should <laughs> how can um, i get on chocolate sundays and then uh february 11th i have a 9 p.m show at jp's comedy club i forget the gentleman whose name is oh on never the show, mind but he's very funny um and i'll be opening for him that's amazing uh, like 10 minutes Oh, that is it, Michael Longfellow? Mm -mm, it's someone else. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna be hosting a JP's February 22nd through the 24th. Is that Michael Longfellow? No, it's oh, not. Okay. I okay. forgot. It's a guy that's really good at crowd work. Oh, really? So I'm excited to oh, so see what he's got. That. Yeah, they have some pretty good uh, people that come through on that show. Yeah, or on that stage rather at JP's. Yeah. So it's not too bad. It's, it's interesting. It's almost like uh, farmers. Farmers only convention or something. It's kind of cool. Because <laughs> it's that Mormon territory. So. The crowd is weird. Yeah. yeah the crowd is. They kind of intimidate me. JP's me crowd. too. Me too. Because I'm hosting there. Uh, I've hosted there before. And it's also sometimes they're just really into it. Sometimes yeah. they're not. Yeah. Sometimes you can get a crowd where they're like, yeah, balls, you know. And then other time they're like, balls. Ooh, you know, he said like, the B oh, word. My God. Oh, I'm going to have to go to Temple and confess. <laughs> like, holy shit. So that, that's one thing that I, I think people should do when they're hosting these uh, shows is they make sure that they uh, get the right. And when they pull comics from the pool of comics in the city, they should make sure that we match whoever we're opening for. Yeah. The, the same vibe, you know. That's totally. Yeah. Maybe that's why Jim picked me because people have said that I look like a Mormon Jesus. Now. Oh, there you go. So you can tell them that as soon as you get on the stage, it'd be like, "I'm here to bless you, but I do not have any fish or wine." Oh, I can you write my jokes yes, for me? Because that's way better me. than the material yeah. I have. Tell them I don't have any fish or wine for you tonight, but I do have a Bevmo <laughs> card. <laughs> if anyone's interested after the show, <laughs> I heard JP selling beer for twenty dollars a can. <laughs> yeah. you can get one of those. <laughs> Oh my God! Plus tax, plus tax. <laughs> <laughs> and a delivery fee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. And you had to have brought at least three people <laughs> at least as three the people. audience. <laughs> oh, JP, I love JP. Well, I'm trying to keep him open. Trying to yeah. keep him open. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, anything else you want to say before we um, pop off? I have another show, but it's in May, so I don't even remember the date. Oh, look at my calendar. well, you know what? I'll put this is all going to be in the show notes. So our listeners yeah. and watchers can just like go sometime on sometime in May. So, yeah. Yeah. You know what? And then when you give it to me, I'll just put in the, in the give me the link and then I'll put the link in the yeah, show oh, notes. Yeah. yeah. And um, you can check my website at cricketguild.com and uh, you can see like uh, get links to shows and stuff there. Oh, beautiful. I'll just use that one. That one sounds. Yeah. And uh, all that stuff is there. And yeah, that's it. Just beautiful. Uh, Old lady from the south side of Chicago. <laughs> I feel like that was the best way to end it because I was thinking, how can we end oh, this? Oh, you know what? I know how to end it. I'm going to play your song. Can you play? No. Oh, okay. I'm just going to play your song. Regardless. Am I Please. It? Am I, no, it's the other way. Actually, hold it. Yeah, the other way. Because I think the... Uh, are you left-handed or right-handed? Uh, what just fell off? The pick. <laughs> oh, hold shit. Okay. I'll get it for you. All right. Uh, Am I left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed. Oh, okay, so it's going to be the other way, but... Oh, shit, but I'm... You know what? It doesn't matter. For the sake? I can't, I can't play, so who cares? No, yeah, I know. Uh, Why am I getting technical and then I'll here? use my nails as a pick. Go ahead, go ahead. Do, it. Uh, Do an arpeggio. I, I wish I had a song, but I don't, so... I can try. Oh, see, that sounds good. That's you, that sounds... You're going to do it like a ladle thing? Ladle? A, a ladle thing? I don't know. <laughs> your lay, your lay, your lay. Oh, I had a cricket on your company in my podcast.
This has been a comedy advice podcast. Yeah! We had a good time. We talked about aliens and blood types. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Beautiful. Wonderful. You know what? I think we could. I I've like never made a song before on a comedy advice podcast. Yeah, you should. But if you want, do you, it sounds like you sing. Uh, no, I, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, but I can sing Old McDonald. For the sake of this, <coughs> we'll, we'll make a song. We'll go, I'll do a, like a nice jovial vibe. Mm-hmm. No, it's actually oh, sad. Oh, that's beautiful. I can tell you a joke over a song. I can no, do my please, I, please, I can please. do my limerick over a song. We'll do we'll do okay. Okay, so the, just to just to uh, put, bring this joke into context or this song into context, uh, this is going to be on my headstone uh, when I die. Here lies Cricket Gill. Her sex life had no frills. So on sex toys, all her money was spent. So on this day, let us rejoice when we say, oh, how she came and went. The end. Oh, that was so good.